in that sense, I think the internet for him would have been an absolute marvel. Foucault, of course, was um, an extremely smart man and his main interest, and in fact also the name of his chair at the Collège de France, was the architecture of knowledge. And of course, the knowledge he could investigate himself was a knowledge that predated the internet. It was actually a knowledge, you know, that was, when we look at it, from the present. Very primitive. It was all documents, it was books, it was archives, it was that sort of thing. Yet he spoke about a knowledge environment which he called panoptic, meaning we live in, a, in an environment, a society, in which knowledge is non-stop aggregated about individuals in the form of instance, police files, but also medical files, housing files, income files, and so on, statistics. Uh, and in, in that sense, I think the internet for him would have been an absolute marvel. Because a lot of what he said about uh, that new regime of surveillance and you know data management, as we would now call it, and in a way also profiling, as we would now call it, only became reality after he died. And so the panopticon we now have is vastly more, uh, uh, how should I say, vastly more influential, vastly more uh, uh, effective than anything he had around him in those days. So for him, I think the internet must have been, would have been, an absolute marvel and an absolute uh, demonstration of the accuracy of things he wrote way back in the 60s and 1970s. But showing this, this is the panopticon. Um, one of the things that I love to work about is the way in which we manage what we now call the selfie. So the selfie, we are all familiar with that. We make selfies on a non-stop basis, basically. And we circulate them over the web. We got special say, platforms, we got Instagram, Facebook, what have you. Uh, now, while we do that, of course, we always produce data about ourselves. And with every new uh, little bit of action we undertake on these little machines, for instance, every app we open, even your GPS, uh, even you know things like uh, WhatsApp, name it. With every with every app we open, we release little bits of information that are being, how should I say, incorporated, aggregated into a new selfie. Not a selfie made by us, but one made about us by other people. And here's the Panopticon. So his idea of the Panopticon, Foucault's idea of the Panopticon was you're in an environment in which you know that you will be seen, but you don't know when and how and what will be seen. So you will adjust perpetually your behavior to this idea that someone might observe you. Well, well uh, in a very interesting way these days, the awareness of that somebody is very low, but what we do is exactly what he predicted. We do a lot in the way of speaking about ourselves, revealing stuff about ourselves, disclosing information about ourselves, and so on and so on. And it is effectively used in the form of these, uh, uh, let's say, other selfies, you know, the selfies made about us by other people. Uh, it's the perfect panopticon. And we, we, we have one in our pockets or in our bags all day. Foucault not only described that particular aspect of the prison, he also described all those other agents of knowledge that, was, that were aggregated around it. For instance, psychiatrists, medical doctors, but also the criminologists, uh, also people that we would now call the parole officers who had to observe your behavior, make sure you know, that you made improvements in, uh, in view of reintegration in society and so on and so on. So if we now think about social media, they actually incorporate all of these functions that Foucault described, including the administrative, uh, including you know, the, the, the analytical, including the, the, the very essential forms of observation and the regulation of behavior. Hey, you have to tie your shoelaces, do that now. All, right? all of these functions are in many ways combined in Facebook, in YouTube, in uh, social media in general. It's been very, very much debated, you know, the power of the social media. Uh, and the reason why it is an issue is, of course, the scope of these, of these instruments. If you think about Facebook, I, uh, I think the latest statistics that were released by Facebook show that they have approximately 2.3 billion accounts. So this is a, 
a scale of interaction and, a, and of, of the building of a community, even if it's a very loose community, has never been seen before in, in the history of mankind. Now, those who have an impact on the lives of, let's say, 2.3 billion individuals have real power. So this is a very legitimate question. We were also confronted with that power. So the power uh, is not just the power to bring people together, which might be very positive, might also be very negative anyway. No, no, it is real power in a real world. It is, for instance, the power to influence elections. The power also to create audiences for particular ideas or for particular commodities. And so in, in, in that sense, you know, when we go to a 20th century vocabulary, it would be called manipulation. It would be called brainwashing. It would be called thought control. And it's all done algorithmically. So even, uh, or at least, you know, we don't really see it. But there's real power there, okay? And the power of those platforms uh, only becomes really visible whenever we see a breach of the rules we assume that would play. Like, you know, they would only do what they have announced uh, that they will do, right? Like bring us in an, an interaction with a huge global group. No, they do vastly more than that. They create these new selfies, you know, these aggregations of data, and they sell them. We are the product. We are not the producers, or at least we are not the, 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 the people who just enjoy Facebook. We make it, but in a very, very different way from what we believe that it is that we do. And that is power as well. So in that sense, it would be helpful if we start looking very critically at those new phenomena such as uh, social media using a 20th century vocabulary of manipulation, propaganda, thought control, brainwashing and so on. You can say those are weird words, yes, of course, but there is a degree of weirdness in what happens now when it comes to power and, and social media. We traditionally, as human beings, believe very, very strongly that the communities of which we are members have been chosen by ourselves. So I choose my friends, okay? And I choose the social environments in which I wish to dwell and the ideas with which I want to engage myself and so on. Now what happens, you know, through the algorithms on every social medium is the construction of groups around you. We label them as the algorithmic bubbles, okay? Uh, the, the construction of groups that are, have not been chosen by us, but have been chosen by the others by Facebook, by YouTube, you know, by the, the, the organization behind the social media. And in that sense, you know, we find ourselves very often in, in social environments of which we believe that we have constructed them ourselves while they have actually been made by other people. And again, if we use these old words like manipulation, this is clearly manipulation. It happens on a daily basis. And, and a good instance is, I mean, I'm sure everyone has had the, the experience, you know, that by accident on your Facebook uh, uh, on your Facebook page, by accident, you click an advertisement for, I don't know what, for, uh, uh, for insurances. Okay. Now, for the next two weeks, uh, as by miracle, you will get a lot of those. Not just of the particular insurance that you clicked, but everything that is related to it. Not only that, you will, as by, by miracle, only see your friends, the segment of your community of self-made friends, who have already had an interest in exactly the same thing, all related stuff. Because, the, the, for instance, the, the insurance may statistically also be combined with a particular age, a particular uh, profile of consumption. Uh, the idea, you know, that, for instance, you have to take a mortgage very, very soon, so a level of income and so on and so on. And so you find yourself surrounded for several weeks by a group that you have not chosen yourself. And then, of course, you know, naturally, or at least that's the expectation uh, that, is, that is in a way organized or manipulated by the algorithm, the expectation is that we will start engaging with the idea of buying, uh, you know, insurance and why, uh, what would the best one be and so on and so on. So in that, in that way, you know, it's a trap for, uh, uh, or at least the community is a trap for commodities, uh, for marketing. It is a, uh, a marketing trap in general. If you look for uh, examples of the real world power of the so-called virtual media, then of course Brexit is inevitable as an, as, as an example. Brexit to some extent also Trump's election, but let's stick to Brexit. 
because one of the things you 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 have observed there is that uh, a modern mass mobilization happens largely not just uh, you know through the mass media but uh, through new media in general social media in particular so one of the things you had was an organized um, an organized form of uh, mobilization propaganda at a massive massive scale using electronic bots using the trolling system using memes etc etc like a very very 21st century mode of new political communication if you wish and it had a real effect and for the moment you know it's really hard to think about elections anyway you know that have not in some way been influenced by uh, new social media or in which you know they have been entirely absent that is almost unthinkable uh, and so here you see that while we had a very strong idea you know that mass media the traditional mass media for instance Rupert Murdoch okay we were relatively sure, you know, that Murdoch has had an influence on the election of Tony Blair, uh, on Thatcher and so on and so on. So we knew about the influence of, of these big media tycoons uh, on international politics and on, on let's say, decision making and what have you. But we're not yet aware of the fact, you know, that social media actually not just also play that role, but expand that Role. So what you now have is an enormous influence of the media in general, so the old one, the mass media, as well as the new one, the social media, in the construction of new political uh, worlds, in a way, and of course all sorts of effects like elections and what have you. And you know, Brexit uh, is, is a very, very, uh, is a very, very good example, and also more or less historic in the sense that it was one of the very first dramatic instances. Uh, in which you could clearly see that this new form of mass uh, propaganda, if you wish, has had an effect. I would like to add a little footnote to that. Um, there is a lot of, um, of course, you know, one is very concerned about the way in which these, these new media have an influence on political life and, and on the outcomes of, let's say, decision making and so on and so on. Uh, there is also the issue about the Russian influence on, on, on the election of, of, of Mr. Trump. Uh, and of course, given the global nature of the, <laughs> the Internet, it's hard to control who influences local elections or national elections because those boundaries are not there in Facebook, right? But we should be aware of the fact that the only victories that have been won using these massive investments in social media campaigns have been relatively small. Brexit was a victory by a very small margin and of course you know the victory of Mr. Trump was also a victory by a very very small margin so we can conclude a number of things from that one is you you don't yet see an overwhelming effect of that it's not like you know 90% of the population is affected by these new forms of, of uh, mass media communication and social media communication but on the other hand it may effectively tip the balance when there is like a sort of 50 50 a relationship between the different camps that's when social media might give you that one percent that makes a difference between a victory or a defeat power knowledge was his um, uh, central notion all right so the, the the idea that in modernity so the period in which we now live there is no uh, no no effective power that operates outside of knowledge and that knowledge itself is the essential form of real-world power okay he didn't really worry about whether that knowledge was factually true or not on the contrary he was one of the very first people to actually show how um, very clear-cut instances of incidents were surrounded by very very different accounts of events and and a very classic example of that is his book on on, uh, on Pierre Rivière who was Pierre Rivière? Well, he was a young man in the 19th century who one day basically butchered his entire family. So they lived in the forest, they were isolated, you know, there were all sorts of issues in that family very clearly, and he butchered everybody. Of course, he was apprehended uh, and he was arrested. And then a uh, hundred years later, Foucault published a book in which he basically edited and showed all the documents that surrounded that very clear case. 
so you have all these different statements, a statement by himself, you have a statement by neighbors or friends or you know relatives from the same village, of the important people in that village, you have a statement by the police officer, by the judge, by the, the medical examiner, and so on and so on. We still have that. And he, he essentially showed that although all of them address the truth in a way, so they address exactly the same reality, those, uh, that young man had effectively assassinated those numbers of individuals and they're really dead okay so no doubt about that but how very very different angles on reality could be organized and has or, or, you know they have to be in some way joined in order to create a verdict by a judge okay so what he showed by that was that we uh, we we have ways we have institutional ways we have ways for instance also here in the university in which from a variety of perspectives uh, either very close to the truth or rather remote from the truth, we have ways of bringing them into a procedure of selection and of decision making. Now, if we bring that now to the issue of, let's say, fake news or alternative, you know, facts as they were called, um, it is very clear that we haven't yet arrived at the a robust procedure for that. Okay, we we don't yet have like a, a sort of general norm for handling and judging and making selections between different little chunks of information that might be true and might contribute to our, uh, let's say, eventual view, like in an election, they may influence my voting decision. Uh, we don't yet have like the mental or the social or the social cultural software, you know, to make those decisions. Misinformation itself is of course a thing that we need to be very very careful with. Now uh, let's be very clear about this. There are very clear hoaxes. A lie is a lie. So if somebody says I'm not married and he or she is married that's a lie. Okay no question about that. But I think a lot of the debate is about versions of, uh, of reality. Uh, so accounts of reality that might conflict. Now, one of the things that we, of course, now see in the world of social media is the enormous, uh, uh, how should I say, the, the, the way in which a lot of what happens there is not about knowledge, but is about attitudes, emotions, moralizations. I like it or I don't like it, okay? I agree with it or I don't agree with it. I want to believe this or I don't want to believe this. It makes me furious, it makes me angry, it makes me outraged, it makes me upset, or it makes me very happy, or I'm elated, or I, uh, I love and I hate. All right. So in that sense, when we speak about misinformation, uh, the information itself is very often not very relevant. It is the way in which we relate to that particular bit of information as a version of reality. A lot of what we call misinformation is emotion, is an expression of our emotive reaction uh, with regard to particular versions of the truth. Different versions of the truth, now, of course, you know, that is a, a very Foucauldian statement. And in his work, you know, and again, that relates strongly, in my view, to what we now do online in social media and so on, he developed this notion of uh, the very diction. Literally, of course, meaning speaking the truth. But veridiction is an action. It is a social, it is a way of uh, doing things. All right? So it's not about the matter, the information itself. It's about how you handle that information in such a way that others might accept it as the truth. And for instance, you know, the selfie in that sense is a veridictional thing. All right. Uh, in the sense, you know, that when we make a selfie, for instance, imagine now that a very famous football player would walk here and I would say, oh my God, I'm such a fan of you and I, I would like to make a selfie with you. That would be allowed. It is very dictional in the sense that I speak the truth. He was with me and I made this picture. Okay, so far so good. Whenever we release information on social media, we try to be true. We try to basically say something about ourselves that is real and true. However, we all know that we're very selective in that, all right? And that, for instance, if you look at our profile pictures on social media, 
that we very often look a great deal better than in everyday life. For instance, we would use sunglasses, a particular way of dressing, uh, or a particular decor. For instance, you see a lot of profile pictures that are made during holidays. A beautiful setting sun, a beach behind you, you know, nice people around you, nice buildings and things like that. So in that sense, we already manipulated the truth about ourselves, or at least the signal we give to the others is, um, when you look at me, look at me in this way. And here's a version of the truth. So we, we in many ways, do a lot of work in order to create not just the truth about ourselves, but particular versions of the truth. Okay. The veridictional is the ideology of social media. So again, here is Foucault, who's very, very relevant for what happens now, even if he's never witnessed, you know, those, those new developments. But the veridictional is exactly what Mr. Zuckerberg asks us every morning when we open Facebook. What are you thinking about? What are you involved in? Where are you? Who are you with? What have you eaten? What are you buying? What are you wearing? And so on and so on. So make statements about yourself, factual statements. Okay, which is why we are... Uh, relatively easy to manipulate on social media because we do have that ideology that the other is also basically saying the truth. That what I see there is the real person, the real truth, an articulation of a particular idea or an account of a set of events that are really true. And that's why, you know, we very often walk into the trap of manipulation. We are easy to manipulate. And of course, you know, we, we know about phishing and we know about dating sites where, you know, ultimately the individual whom you believed was a very, very nice 19-year-old girl ultimately proves to be a 61-year-old man. Okay, we know about that. But those are extreme cases. There's an enormous zone in between in which we ourselves, you know, do all sorts of little things, you know, in order to create not just the truth about ourselves, but a particular truth, the truth that we want the others to see. And again, you know, that is so Foucault, is the incorporation of the desire to be seen as normal. All right. I want you to see me not just as normal, but as very, very normal, like I want to be beautiful because beautiful is normal. I don't want to be, I don't want to be rude because rude is not normal. I want to be hip because hip is normal. I want to be modern because modern is normal. And we do all sorts of things, you know, in order to construct that particular view of ourselves. It is true, of course, but all sorts of other things about ourselves are also true.